So that almost completes our library of components. Uh, the only things that we have left to examine are complex poles and complex zeros, um, as opposed to simple real poles and simple real zeros. But we'll discuss those in just a little bit. But now that we have our library of components that we've memorized, we can go ahead and apply approach number two to drawing Bode diagrams. And so this approach is first, we put the system into Bode form. Um, you know, that is, put it into a form TS plus one. We then sketch the straight line approximations of the individual components, you know, the gains, the differentiators, the poles. Step three, we then add the graphs. Um, both for the magnitude plots and the phase plots based on those mathematical properties we introduced previously. This will then result in a straight line approximation of the Bode diagram of a given transfer function and we can stop there. If we want to try and make it a little bit more accurate we can try and approximate the curves of the true Bode diagram um, as opposed to just the, the straight line approximation Bode diagram. Okay. So here's an example. Um, if we take a look at this, the first step is to put the system into Bode form. Looking at this transfer function, is it in Bode form? So it's not. And the reason that we can tell it's not is because it doesn't have the form TS plus 1 for that for that pole. Um, we have a 10 here where we need a 1. And so think about how we might be able to put the system into Bode form. Basically all we need to do is factor out a 10 from this from this quantity. If we do that, we factor out a 10, then we'll be left with a 1 here. And we'll be left with 1 divided by 10 here. This puts us into Bode form. Uh, this 10 will then divide into that 100, giving us 10s divided by 1 tenth times s plus 1. The second step is then to sketch the components. So in this case, our components consist of a simple gain, 10, a differentiator, which we'll call component B, and then a simple pole. And we've memorized the Bode diagrams of these three types of elements. So we'll go ahead and, and draw each of those. So go ahead and take a second and see if you can remember what the magnitude plot of a simple gain is. The magnitude plot of a simple gain is simply a straight line where the magnitude is equal to k and when we convert it to decibels we have 20 log 10, where log of 10 is just 1. So that's equal. That line is located at 20 dBs. That's component A. And we'll say the horizontal axis is 0 dBs. Our second component is a pure differentiator. So now think about what the magnitude plot of a pure differentiator looks like. So the magnitude plot of a pure differentiator is a straight line with a slope of positive 20 dBs per decade. And if you think back, the plot of a differentiator crosses the 0 dB axis at 1 radian per second. And so keeping that in mind, where do you think, what frequency do you think then the magnitude plot of the differentiator component B, where do you think it crosses the magnitude plot of the simple gain? Since the slope is positive 20 dBs per decade, um, in order for us to rise this distance from 0 dBs to 20 dBs, we need to run you know, because slope is rise over run, we need to run one decade, one factor of 10. So we cross at, at 10 radians per second. Now let's think about what the Bode magnitude plot of the simple pole is. 
So the Bode magnitude plot of a simple pole starts out at 0 dBs and then it eventually starts to go down at minus 20 dBs per decade. And the point at which it, it breaks is at 1 over t. And so thinking back to what our simple pole looked like, this is t. And so 1 over t is equal to 10. So the Bode diagram of the simple pole is flat at 0 dBs and then at 10 radians per second. We break downwards at minus 20 dBs per decade. So that is component C. Okay. So those are the individual Bode diagrams of the components making up our larger transfer function. We'll then do the same thing for phase. Um, and then in step three, we'll add the individual diagrams of the components. And so we'll do that first for the magnitude plot before we move on to the phase. And so the way that this can be done in essence is at every individual frequency we can just sum the magnitudes to get the total magnitude. So for example, if we pick one radian per second as our frequency, uh, we have one component that has a, a magnitude of zero, another component that has a magnitude of zero, and a component that has a magnitude of 20. So if we add the magnitudes of component A, B, and C, we have 20 plus zero plus zero, which is equal to 20. And we can do that at, at all the frequencies in essence. And plot a bunch of dots and connect the dots. A more efficient way to do this is once we've sort of located a single magnitude plot for our, for our total transfer function, we can then just sort of work based off of the slopes. So if we look at this frequency, we have two components that have magnitude plots that are flat, and one component that has a slope of positive 20 dBs per decade. So if we add those slopes together, we have a slope of 0, a slope of 0, plus a slope of 20. If you add those together, the sum of that is plus 20 dBs per decade. And if we look at lower frequencies, we maintain that slope. So if we go as, as omega gets smaller, these two stay flat, having a slope of 0, and component B has a slope of plus 20 dBs per decade. So this slope continues on you know, forever until as omega approaches zero radians per second. In the other direction, component A stays flat, component B keeps the same magnitude, but component C, its slope changes at 10 radians per second. So we'll keep this same slope until we reach 10, and then at 10 radians per second, it'll change. So above 10 radians per second, we have one component that's flat, has a slope of 0, one component that has a slope of plus 20 dBs per decade, and one component that has a slope of minus 20 dBs per decade. So if you add those three, 20 plus 0 plus minus 20, that sums to 0, and we get that the slope flattens out. And so this is our Bode magnitude plot. It goes up at 20 dBs per decade and then at 10 radians per second we level off flat and this is versus omega in radians per second. Now we can follow a similar procedure for phase. So again thinking back to what the phase of our individual components are um, what is the phase of a simple gain? You know, component A is a simple gain equal to 10. So think about what its phase is equal to. So its phase plot is a straight line at zero degrees for all frequencies. And think about what the phase plot of a differentiator looks like, component B. The phase plot of a differentiator is also a straight line 
it's at positive 90 degrees. And then finally, think about what the phase plot of a simple pole looks like, like this. So if you recall, a simple pole at low frequencies looks like a constant, so it starts off at zero degrees. At high frequencies, it looks like an integrator, so it goes down to minus 90 degrees. And we approximate the in-between as a straight line, where the halfway point is the break frequency, 1 over t, where 1 over t is 10, so that's the break frequency. And the phase begins to change one decade early at 1 radian per second, and it finishes one decade later at 100 radians per second. And if we connect those two lines, we get that phase plot. This is the phase plot of component A, this is the phase plot of component B, and this is the phase plot of component C. And we simply add them together. And so again, you know, we can go to a particular frequency and add up the phases. So at one radian per second and below one radian per second, these phases are all constant. So we have two components that have a phase of zero and one component that has a phase of 90. So 90 plus 0 plus 0 is 90. So at these low frequencies, the phase is equal to 90 degrees. At high frequencies, above 100, everything's flat. So we have one component at plus 90 degrees, one component with a phase of 0 degrees, and one component with a phase of minus 90. So 90 plus 0 plus minus 90 equals 0. And the in-between, we just connect by a straight line where the halfway point is the break frequency. That's at 45 degrees. So this is the straight line approximation of the phase plot for our transfer function again versus omega in radians per second. The last step, step four, if we wish to, is to try and approximate the curves of the actual Bode diagram. So in this case, we would come up following the straight line, but in between those two straight line segments, we would have a curve. Okay. And for this one, we'd start off flat, but it would be sort of almost like an S-curve. Okay. But we don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, in general, the straight line approximation is sufficient. And so that completes the Bode diagram, or, or the straight line approximation of the Bode diagram for that given example. In general, when you draw or sketch a Bode diagram, there's a few things, a few elements that I wish you to include in order to get full credit. And in order for people to understand the, the diagram that you've drawn, the important aspects of it. And so for the magnitude plot, you need to identify the frequency where slope changes. You need to identify the slope of each line segment. And you need to identify the magnitude at at least one frequency. Not all frequencies, but at least one frequency. For the phase plot, you also need to identify the frequency where slope changes. You don't necessarily need to identify the individual slopes, but you do need to draw the magnitudes um, to be correct relative to one another. And I'll try and explain this by going back to the previous slide in a second. And then the last requirement is that the phase of the phase plot be correct um, as frequency goes to zero and frequency goes to infinity. Okay, so going back to the previous slide, this is our resulting magnitude plot, this is our resulting phase plot, and so in order to be correct, we need to identify um, where the slope changes. So the slope changes at 10 radians per second, we can identify that by drawing a little dashed line and identifying the frequency at which that corner occurs. We need to identify the slopes, so here 
the slope is going up at 20 dBs per decade, we write that. Here the slope is flat, so it's apparent that it's zero. You don't actually have to write that. And we also need to identify the magnitude at at least one frequency. So that's what we've done here. At, at one radiance per second, the magnitude is 20 dBs. We don't need to necessarily identify where it crosses zero dBs or um, you know, the magnitude at 10 radians per second. You just need a single magnitude that sort of locates, um, locates the magnitude plot. The shape is correct and you've located it vertically. With the phase plot, again, you need to identify the corner frequencies. So here, um, the switch, this corner occurs at 1 radian per second. This corner occurs at 100 radians per second. We don't need to identify this slope. We don't need to write it in as you know, minus 45 degrees per decade. But we do need it to be correct relative to the other segments. So if this is flat, this needs to be shown to be going down. And if we had um, another break, you know, the slopes need to be correct relative to one another, um, even if we don't identify the particular value of the slope. And the other thing that needs to be correct is we need to identify the phase at low frequencies and high frequencies. So when the limit as omega approaches zero, the phase is equal to 90 degrees, we identify that. And in the limit as omega gets large, the phase approaches zero degrees. Okay. If we identify all of those aspects of the Bode sketch, then you'll get full credit. Now we'll go ahead and do another example.